Hello, and welcome to Science Views from the Valley. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly Kassan. Science Views from the Valley is a monthly program that will explore interesting science topics and how they relate to the San Luis Valley and the Upper Rio Grande region. February is the month most noted for Valentine's Day, when people express their interest in another through gifts, chocolate, cards, and other expressions of love. Today, in honor of Valentine's Day, I would like to discuss how different organisms choose their mates, a phenomenon known as sexual selection. This phenomena is best known in animals, but it may surprise you to learn that plants are also selective when it comes to finding mates. For example, most, but not all, flowers have both male and female reproductive structures. The male reproductive structures are the stamen, which are made up of the anther, which produces the pollen, and the filament, which attaches to the anther, to the base of the flower. The female reproductive structures are the carpal, consisting of the wider ovary at the base and the long, thinner style that contains the pollen tubes and the sticky or feathery stigma that captures the pollen and sends it through the pollen tubes to the ovary. Once the pollen reaches the ovary, it will fertilize the ovules within the ovary, producing seeds. When the weather warms up and you start to see flowers this spring, take a look at the flower. You will usually find the female carpal in the center of the flower, surrounded by the male stamens. When pollen of a plant lands on a plant stigma, a pollen tube forms that allows the pollen to reach and fertilize the ovules in the ovary. Some of these flowering plants, however, have self-incompatibility genes that prevent self-fertilization. When the pollen of a self-incompatible plant lands on the plant stigma, the formation of the pollen tube is halted and no fertilization will take place. This process prevents inbreeding, since the plant will only be able to fertilize other plants that have a different set of genes. But the vast majority of sexual selection examples are animals. How animals choose their mate varies greatly. Most animals will exhibit female choice, where the females are the choosy sex and the males must do their best to convince the female that they are the best choice. One of the most common ways that males try to convince females that they are the best possible mate is through singing. For example, male songbirds sing attractive songs that they've learned from their fathers in the hope of attracting females. Evidence from numerous bird courtship studies have found that females determine a male's fitness by his song quality. Males that have a higher song performance they sing longer and faster than other males, will find more mates than those who do not sing as long or as often. Female songbirds will also judge the male's fitness by the size or complexity of the male's song. Male mockingbirds, for example, learn a great variety of different songs and sounds, including the songs of other animals like frogs. When courting females, the male will sing his entire repertoire of songs and sounds that he has learned. The northern mockingbird, the only mockingbird species in North America, is well known for their large song repertoires. One northern mockingbird sang his greatest hits outside of my home in Texas in 2012, a process that took nearly two hours. I would have been more impressed by his performance if it had not been 2 a.m. These songs not only serve to attract females, but they also indicate the male species. This reduces the chance of two different bird species mating and producing hybrids. Bird songs are developed through a combination of genetics and environment. All male songbirds are born with an innate vocalization of his species, but he refines the song by listening to and mimicking an adult male tutor. The young male will then practice the song until it matches the adult tutor's song. Because the bird's song is refined through listening to an adult male, 
a young male raised by a different species will sing the bird song that resembles the song of his adoptive parents, not his biological parents. This situation almost always leads to a lifetime bachelorhood for this male. Since the females of his biological species will reject him because he's singing the wrong song, and females of adoptive species will reject him because he doesn't sing the song quite right for their species. But birds are not the only animals who sing courtship songs. Male mice not only sing songs to woo the ladies, they also have a repertoire of ultrasonic tunes. Which tune they use depends on what the female is doing when she is near the male. If the male could smell but not hear the female, he would sing a louder, higher pitch song, perhaps to awaken her or hopes that the song will reach her. If the female was awake and nearby, then the male will sing a longer, softer tune. Females appear to prefer males who have complex songs over more simple songs. Another mammal that sings courtship songs is the American pika, a small animal closely related to rabbits and hares, though they look more like rodents. They sing complicated courtship songs to attract females. These songs tend to be longer and more convoluted than the usual cries that pikas make as distress calls. Amphibians, which include the frogs, toads, and salamanders, are also known to sing songs to attract mates. Frog songs are extremely variable and can be used to indicate the species of the frog, the high-pitched peeping of the spring peeper, the duck-like quacking of male wood frogs, the rattling song of the leopard frogs, sounding much like a person snoring, the burping sounds of the eastern spadefoot frog, the trills of the tree frogs, and the deep bass sounds of the male bullfrogs. Another way males attract mates is through elaborate dances, often with showy colors or other ornaments that will attract females. Many male spiders do elaborate dances and in some cases provide their own musical accompaniment to their dances. The Australian peacock spiders, for example, has a brightly colored abdomen that they will raise during their dance and vibrate to gain the attention of the females. Another animal that dances is the male red-capped mannequins, a brightly colored bird found in Central and South America, which do a fast backward moonwalking dance that would make Michael Jackson proud. Here in the San Luis Valley, the sandhill cranes are starting to return. Sandhill cranes also dance to attract mates. Male sandhill cranes will leap and twirl, flap their large wings, and throw sticks and vegetation into the air. The stakes are high. Sandhill cranes mate for life, so their first choice must be a wise one. Another animal that dances is the seahorse. These marine fish not only dance, but they will also change color while they dance. The male will dance circles around the female, who will then join him as they spiral around objects. Often they will twine their tails together as they dance, but even after mating, the seahorse pair will continue to do their beautiful spiraling dances for days afterwards. This helps to reinforce the pair bond. Seahorses, unlike most animals, will mate for life. Male lance-tailed mannequins, another bird species found in Central and South America, practice a rare form of mating behavior called cooperative courtship. This courtship requires two males, one alpha and one beta. These two males will sing together to attract females. But when a female lands on a branch near them, they will begin to do an elaborate dance that involves leaping and somersaulting over each other. If the female continues to show interest, the beta male will fly away, leaving the alpha male to continue with his finale. Why do beta males cooperate in courting females that they will never win? One hypothesis is that the beta males are learning and practicing dance moves that will attract mates in the future. 
Studies of mannequin courtship behavior have indicated that beta males who have participated as an alpha male's wingman are far more likely to become alpha males after a few years. Another behavior that requires multiple males is lecking behavior. Lecking behavior is a elaborate courtship method well studied in birds but seen in other animals including insects, bats, and seals. Lecking behavior resembles a Saturday night at a local club or bar. Males aggregate in traditional lek areas where they will set up a spa and begin to sing, dance, and sometimes even fight with each other to prove their worth to a female. Meanwhile, females will stroll around the lek, observing the different males' displays and battles until choosing their mate. An example of a lecking bird species is the greater sage grouse, which we have here in western Colorado. The male greater sage grouse and the gunnison grouse will congregate in open fields with spare sagebrush cover, which allows the females to better observe the male displays. The males will then perform a strutting display, puffing out two large throat sacs and then quickly deflating them, creating a popping or burping sound. The females, meanwhile, will kick back and watch the males, sometimes for days, before making a choice. Animal species that use the lecking method often return to the same region year after year, sometimes for generations. One of the most tragic photos involving lex was the action of the last heath hen, a male, that returned to the traditional lecking ground of his species to display his strutting and booming calls to females that no longer existed. While some animals sing and dance to attract their mates, other animals are musicians. The aquatic insect group Plecoptera, commonly known as stoneflies, will tap and rub their abdomens on rocks or logs, drumming out a rhythm they hope will attract females. The rhythm that the male beats out is also species specific, so only females of the same species will respond to the drumming. Females of many stonefly species will respond, forming rhythmic duets with the males. Another drumming species is the death watch beetle. Death watch beetles are wood borers, boring into decaying wood, including the old damp wood of building rafters. When the males reach maturity, they will tap their head or jaws against the wood, creating a tapping or ticking sound that will attract mates. The tapping sound made by the beetles, when heard on a quiet night caring for the sick, created the myth that the sounds of the death watch beetle meant death was near. Members of the order Orthoptera, which contains the grasshoppers, crickets, and katydids, are well known for their courtship songs. But these songs are not vocalizations. Instead, these songs are produced by rubbing together the legs, wings, or other body parts, a process known as stridulation. Most male crickets will stridulate by rubbing together two of their four wings. These two wings have structures on them called files and scrapers. The male cricket will hold these two wings up and at an angle, allowing them to rub the scraper over the file to form a sound. Some cricket species, like the mole crickets, will dig tunnels with megaphone-shaped entrances to amplify their courtship songs. Male katydids also rub their wings together to produce a sound, but the females will respond with their own songs allowing the males to find them. Grasshoppers also do something similar, using the small peg-like structures on their hind legs that they will rub against their forewings to produce a song. Colorado is home to over 55 species of velvet ants, wingless wasps that have a colorful fuzzy coat. Velvet ants, also called cow killers due to their incredibly painful sting, also stridulate to attract mates. Both male and female velvet ants have a file and scraper structure on two of their abdominal segments, and they will rub these two segments together to sing courtship songs. But stridulation is not confined to insects. 
A South American bird called the club wing mannequin has a highly modified wing feather that has at least seven ridges along the center. Next to this specialized feather is another modified club-shaped feather that has a stiff curved tip, much like a spoon. The mannequin will shake these feathers, causing the stiff tip of the spoon-shaped feather to hit the ridges of the other feather. This process is much like rubbing a spoon against a washboard, producing a series of sounds that sound somewhat like a violin. Club wing mannequins are able to do this so quickly that they can produce 1,400 sounds per second. Club wing mannequins are also a lecking species, so the males gather in a tree where each of them will bow and hop from branch to branch, producing violin-type sounds to attract mates. To date, the club wing mannequin is the only bird that uses stridulation to make courtship sounds. Male cicadas use a timbal organ that is located in their abdomen. Timbal organs are membranes that can vibrate rapidly when the muscle controlling the membrane are contracted and released quickly. The males of some cicada species will synchronize their calls, forming an all-male chorus that will attract females. But every concert needs a light show, and fireflies are excellent performers of flashing lights. In my December show, I talked about how different animals bioluminesce, in other words, produce their own chemical light. Male fireflies will produce this light to flash during courtship. If the male's flash pattern is attractive to the female, she will flash back to indicate her receptiveness to the male. Studies of female firefly behavior found that females typically choose males who flash longer and faster. The flash pattern is also indicative of the species, preventing a female firefly from mating with a male of another species. But in at least one species of firefly, females will mimic the flash of a different species of fireflies, tricking an amorous male into thinking he has attracted a mate. But once the male comes near this female, she will kill and eat him. Another animal that uses bioluminescence during courtship is a marine microcrustacean called an ostracod, commonly known as sea shrimp. Male Caribbean sea shrimp will gather during the darkest period of the night, when there is no moonlight, and form trains of blue bioluminescent pulses in the hopes of attracting females. Some males will forgo the songs and dancing, preferring to build large ornamental displays. Satin bowerbirds are the best known example of animals that use art to attract mates. Bowerbirds, whose range includes Australia and New Guinea, build elaborate displays that resemble nests. But the nest-like structures, called bowers, are only used for courtship and mating. The bower is usually made up of sticks and dry grass, but the male bowerbirds will spend days searching for ornaments to place on the bower. Shells, flowers, feathers, even shiny man-made objects like glass, gun shells, and coins are used to decorate the bower. Male bowerbirds are also known to observe other male bower building often stealing shiny objects from the competing male's bowers and using them to decorate their own bower. Each bower is uniquely decorated to the male's particular sense of art. Female bowerbirds will visit the different bowers, returning several times to the bowers they prefer before making a selection. Pufferfish also have a sense of artistry when it comes to courting females. Male pufferfish will spend seven to nine days on average producing large geometric circles in the seafloor sediments by flapping their fins. Once the males have completed their designs, the female pufferfish will inspect them. These artistic courtship displays were discovered by divers relatively recently, in 1995, so there is still much to learn about what female pufferfish prefer in the designs. To date, researchers are uncertain on what characteristics of these seafloor art pieces are found attractive to female pufferfish. 
Like humans on Valentine's Day, some male animals use gifts to attract mates. These gifts are called nuptial gifts. Scorpion flies, for example, will present a nuptial gift of a bug covered in their mouth secretions, essentially scorpion fly spit, to a female during courtship. If she starts to eat the nuptial gift, then the male will proceed to mate with her. Male scorpion flies that are unable to obtain a bug or other food item will attempt to fool the female by producing a ball of spit. Other males will attempt to mate with the female without presenting a nuptial gift. The quality of the nuptial gift, however, is important to the female. Like women who prefer expensive gifts while being courted, the female scorpion fly will judge the male's gift. Bugs and other prey are much preferred over a ball of spit, and both nuptial gifts are preferred over no gift at all. Members of two spider families are also known to offer nuptial gifts. The Pissaridae, known as the nursery web spiders, and the Trochalidae, a closely related spider family that lives in Central and South America. Like the scorpion flies, males of these spider species will present a silk-covered prey to the female. If she accepts the gift, she will grab the prey and begin eating. The male will then mate with the female while she is busy eating. This allows the male to mate relatively safely. The female will not attack if she is busy eating. Here in Colorado, we have a butterfly species called the green vein white. These butterflies are known to be polyandrous, meaning that the female will mate with many different males. To improve mating success, male white butterflies will produce a large spermatophore, a capsule containing sperm and nutritional substances that the female will eat after the spermatophore has been deposited. The spermatophore of the green vein white is very large. The average spermatophore makes up 15% of the male's body mass. Larger is certainly better. Females not only prefer larger spermatophores, they also produce more offspring when the spermatophore has lots of nutrients. Males, however, must use an enormous amount of energy to produce these large spermatophores. The first two or three spermatophores will be large, but subsequent spermatophores will be smaller as the male's resources decline. Sometimes the male butterflies will start to break down their own wing muscle tissue and internal organs in order to create enough energy to produce these large spermatophores. Male Mormon crickets also produce large spermatophores the average male cricket will produce spermatophores that make up nearly 27% of his body weight. Most of this spermatophore is food for the female. Because the spermatophore takes so much energy for the male Mormon crickets to produce, they exhibit the rare situation of male choice, where the male is the choosier sex instead of the female. Female Mormon crickets will swarm the area where males are located, fighting with each other for the opportunity of mating with the male who has the large spermatophore. Since larger females are more likely to produce more offspring, male Mormon crickets are attracted to the largest females and are even known to pick them up and weigh them to determine their qualities as a mate. Some animals exhibit food sharing as part of their courtship much like humans will go out for dinner on dates. Osprey, a type of fish-eating bird of prey, and common terns, a type of seabird, exhibits courtship feeding. The males of both species will catch a fish and present it to the female. Sometimes they will even feed it to the female as part of the courtship behavior. I hope you enjoyed today's show and maybe think a bit about how similar different animal courtship behaviors are to human courtship behaviors. I have received a request to talk about Mars in the light of last week's successful landing of the most recent Mars rover, Perseverance. So on March 25th, I will discuss the planet Mars, 
its origins, the climate, and describe what we have learned about the planet from the different landers we have sent to Mars over the past 60 years. If you have a question or a topic you would like to see discussed on this show, email me at spiderwomankrza at gmail.com. I would like to wish everyone a wonderful day, and I hope you will join me next month. <music>